already missed clicking. You saved the day, fellow expert. Let's start on our front plane, shall we? So in a few weeks, I'm gonna be in Los Angeles for SolidWorks World 2017. I'm really looking forward to Model Mania this year because this is something that I've won before. Actually, in 2013 and 2015, I've gotten third place. 2017, this is my year. I'm gonna get first place in the reseller channel. To help prepare, I'm gonna go through the previous Model Manias. One a day, 17 days, 17 Model Manias. So as you can see here, there's a wealth of information here and different ways to practice your SolidWorks techniques. So feel free to follow along with me. Maybe you can post a video as well showing me how fast you were able to do this. But my technique here in practicing and preparing is to do this like you would at SolidWorks World. You sit down at a table, you're given a drawing, you have no preparation time. You maybe have a couple moments to look at the drawing and get ready. Um, and then, you go. Oh, the timer starts. So we have 20 minutes on the clock, which is what you get. Um, and depending on the year, you may have a simulation challenge, you may not. I think um, we're going to start in 2000. I don't think we have a simulation cha challenge here at the end. Uh, we just have to create the model as fast as we can and as accurately as possible because that's how they're ranked. So with that, um, we're going to go ahead and get into SolidWorks. We're using 2017 Service Pack 1. Uh, usually you're using the latest version of the software. Um, I'm also using the default layout. Uh, this is a very important piece because when you get to Model Mania, again, you only have 20 minutes, you want to spend it on modeling and getting that part as best as you can, rather than having to worry about changing the settings. So be familiar with the default layout for your command manager, for your toolbars, for the mouse gestures, etc. Because those are the tools that you're going to have right away. So with that, um, Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to take a couple moments here just to take a look at the drawing. I do have two prepared, but keep in mind you only have one at a time uh, so that you get the first drawing, you model up as fast as you can, and when you finish it, you grab the proctor and say, hey, I'm done, give me uh, part two. They give you part two, and all the while, the clock is still ticking. So we're gonna kinda get as realistic as we can here. Um, so taking a look at this in the beginning moments here before the timer starts as you're entering in your information, uh, your contact information to SolidWorks, uh, start thinking about how you're going to build this part. Um, it's always important to read the notes as well. So all rounds to be 0.188 radius. Um, I don't see any dimensions call or units called out on the drawing, so we'll just kind of assume what's default with the part template that they give us. Uh, missing dimensions are assumed to be typical, symmetry implied. Okay, so I think I know how I'm going to do this. Build up that um, base, build up the ring, build up um, the two three-hold offsets. Um, there's some details here as well. So I think I'm ready. I'm going to pull this over to my other screen here um, so we can focus on SolidWorks there at the top. Um, let's go ahead and start our timer and get going. So let's start on our front plane, shall we? I'll grab a center line. Already misclicking. For construction. I guess it doesn't have to be, but if I do it for construction, that gives me um, a revolve to work with out of the gate. Um, going that arc transition is always popular. Control select there, make it coincidence. And what is our height? Our height is 3.35. Automatic scaling there for our our sketch. Dimension to the center line that gives us the diameter of 3.75. Full. That doesn't look right, does it? 3.75. Oh, wrong one. That one is 2.7. And I'll have a link in the description of where you can find uh, these PDFs where you can download and compare. Okay, fully defined sketch. I got to get moving. Revolve. Yes, go ahead and automatically close it. That's great. Um, let's shell this. And I do have a 3D motion controller here to reposition. You do not have that um, as you get in. Uh, thickness 0.25 okay 
Uh, let's go back to the front plane again. I'll build this off to the side. Now I could have done this in the part or in that first sketch, but um, oh well. We got to keep going. 0.25 from the bottom. And this is the other diameter. So how am I going to mention that? Let's grab another center line. Yeah, because this is where I could have saved some time there and actually done this all in one sketch. But I've had that same center line there. 3.75. And go straight to our revolve. We have multiple center lines there, so we'll grab that one. It's looking good. Um, we're still on our fronts here, so let's go ahead and create a sketch right on it. Um, we've got an interesting technique here that we'll use so that we don't have to create a whole bunch of reference geometry. Let's start out just, I don't know, getting a rough idea of what's happening here. So we've got about maybe three circles. These two are the same. Um, could do a center line there. Let's do it. Connect the two, and we have a midpoint relationship that we can make there. Now we'll add some dimensions. These were given um, the radius, so I'll just take the radius, 0.38 times 2, to give us that diameter. Same thing here for the middle section. Um, where is it? 0.61 times 2. Okay, and from here, Holding our sketch line over the circles automatically implies some tangency here. We'll double click to go between the multiple segments. And we've got it. Okay, a couple things here. I know that's going to be tangent to the top. Um, what else is underdefined? Oh, sure. Let's make that vertically aligned with the center. So we'll make that coincident. That gets us there. We have this height factor to worry about. What is that? We have the length of this line at 1.5. Fully defined sketch. Awesome. Selected contours. We'll do that one. 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 Looks good. Okay. <laughs> A lot of clicking there, but okay, we got it. Um, I'm going to do this at an offset. So a lot of folks don't know this, but you can um, offset a um, extrude, start at a different location. Um, this is going to be 2.75, and we are going to reverse the direction and go up to next. Beautiful. Because that way we don't interfere with the uh, shell inside. All right, let's keep working on this guy here. So we have a center hole that goes all the way through. We'll wake up some reference geometry there. I could key in those dimensions. You see that pop up there. It's just not my habit. 0.75. Um, we will do an extrude cut up to next. Probably some of the most expensive features in terms of how long it takes to calculate. Simple part. I'm not going to worry about it. I just need to do it for time. All right, reference that up there. We've got two holes down here. You could use hole wizard for this. Again, just habit. I don't know. Maybe we'll get it here. Nope. Smart dimension, just one of them, please. 0.38, and we are going to extrude cut that at one inch in. Looking good. Okay, we're going to save the fillets for the end. Um, I want to pattern this around, so we will do a oh, circular pattern. Direction. We can actually use, I should be able to use that face. I can. Features, that guy, that guy, and that guy. Uh, instant spacing, two instances, what, 45 degrees, I think? There we go. Golden. Okay, uh, let's work on that third extrude. Um, coming out there, we're at 14 minutes. We're not doing bad. I could do better, probably. How many I could create that? Um, I want the front and right. I'm going to create an axis. Something I can rotate about, and then we'll take that front and axis, and we will create a plane from that. It's going to be at 45 degrees, not 90. Opposite direction. So it puts it over there, and our orientation is going to be off here, but uh, deal with it. Click OK. Create a sketch. Notice, yeah, normal 2. Hit Alt. Use the arrow keys to push us over. 
Um, let's grab some center lines. We're going to start there, go up some distance. We're going to come up there, but we also need a six degree dimension between there, six. Um, I have a dimension from that endpoint to there, vertical, I believe, right? Oh, come on. Uh, 2.35. Now the yeah, the other dimension, horizontal distance um, from here to that line, 2.4. Fully defined sketch. Okay, so here's where I can exit the sketch. It's still going to be shown, but we'll grab that point, grab that line, grab a plane, beautiful, and sketch there. We're kind of at a cockeyed angle, but we're working with the circle anyway. Um, so outside of where is it where is it oh 1.2 and reverse up to next let's create a hole in there I think right of 0.82 extrude cuts up to next. Uh, I can hide all this stuff here. I don't want to see. Um, so far, so good. We're at 12 minutes. So good. We're we're not halfway point yet. No, so we um, still have some time. I think I am ready for some fillets. But this is time to kind of double check a couple things. Take a couple moments. I think I'm looking good. So fillet tool. Uh, we'll see how well this does for us. So all rounds are 0.188. And let's just get click happy, shall we? Click. And let's see what this suggests. We don't want the bottom, but we can kind of come back to those later. Um, and are all, all those around. So if I select that and then I deselect that one, does that actually give me? I need this as well, right? That's going down there. Oftentimes they use color on the model to help understand what's going on. Um, I think looking at all the rounds, it's just around those components, right? Those bosses. And take a peek at it with me. You think do I have it all? Round, 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 round. I don't see anything else, so I don't know. I think I got it. I think I'm good. So what I would do there, hit save. Um, say, hey, Mr. Proctor, I'm ready for part two. So, yeah, assuming I did all that right, let's switch over to part two. All right, so we're given some highlighted changes here. We still have some sections. So the overall height has changed four and a half. That distance is four. Okay, that's three. Interesting. Okay, let's see how well this kind of works out with some of these changes because it just highlights some of those change dimensions for us. Um, where are we going to go to get this? So I don't have to edit the sketches here. I can just kind of jump in. Um, Instant 3D also helps out, so I can just modify that there. 3.4. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. <laughs> okay, we're looking good. Um, overall height. Ooh, our fillets failed. Um, typically they do. 4.5. And that guy right our layout no nope, not that sketch that one what was our height to that point is 3.5 yeah missing dimensions are typical no material applied here so yeah no simulation so you just have to make these changes so I have to correct my fillet okay yeah, it's 2017, lets me know, yep, I got issues, I'm missing geometry. Okay, fine. Delete that. You're gone anyway. Um, interesting. Is there another change? Let's cancel out here. Because we made the diameter bigger, that kind of changes um, what happened earlier. Um, tricky. Tricky, tricky. How much time do we have? 
eight minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, ideally the fastest possible, but um, that's fine. I mean, it's picking up some of that. It knows. Here, let's just clear that out. We have the selection manager pop up again. I think we do. So we are all virtual. I want everything inside too. Ooh, does that do it? Connected? It's gonna fail on me. Preview's not coming out. Er, fill it expert. Can you save the day? Can you save the day, fill it expert? I should yeah, and really something like this, it's like, uh don't know fill it expert. Fill it expert not completely. Would you like to keep no. How do I wanna do that? Um Let's roll back here a little bit. Let's see, is it after there? Let's do that 0.18 fillet all around this guy. Um, I wonder, because yeah, that geometry right in the middle. Let's add that fillet in there. Ooh, pretty. That did it. That's magic. <laughs> yeah, of course, a whole bunch of missing edges. Select that one. Does that merge it in pretty well? It looks like it on the drawing. So I think I am... Ooh, where'd my PDF go? I lost my PDF. But I think that's it. I think we got it. So let's hit stop. Six minutes, 48 seconds remain. Um, I think I did pretty good there. I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Alright, so actually going back through this and double checking some of my work, making sure I did it, I made a critical mistake. Uh, and this would have been in the part one rather than part two of some of the relationships that I was making. It was regarding this cylinder. Kind of eyeballed it when I created it. Um, it seemed kind of close, um, and I think it, it worked overall. Um, however, the sketch was not fully defined, and it's really good to make sure that you have fully defined sketches. So as you see here, as I edit that sketch, it is blue, it's not fully defined. Uh, let's bring some back my sketches again, because as you see, right, if I can just click on that circle, the center point of that circle, it moves. Yeah, it's not gonna work. I want to make sure we are projected on that line. There we go, exit sketch. And now I have the correct part. So we did it. One down, 16 to go. Thank you so much for your attention. Hopefully you learned a couple interesting things there that you can bring back to your SOLIDWORKS usage. Um, and please consider subscribing so that you can see how I go through this journey and go through the next Model Mania challenges blind and trying to reenact that exact Model Mania experience so that when comes time in February to take the next Model Mania challenge, I'm going to knock it out of the park and I'll see you up on stage. Have a good one.